my worst enemy The flesh that's covering me Brings me down to my knees Welcome to Sermons in the Park a ministry exploring biblical truth from the Word of God, focusing on the truths that help us in our daily walk with Christ in every aspect of our lives. Now, here is your Reverend, Jamie McCaskill. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to an all-new Sermons in the Park, a very short Sermon in the Park for this Saturday, okay? Um, just something I want to quickly put up here Um for Saturday because I'm going to be busy all day you know I've got to be at the farmer's market and do the farmer's market selling my book Preacher Tele Deliverance on sale on Amazon you can check it out on there you can come if you're here in Fostory or near Fostory come get you a copy now if you're somebody who's known me for a little while you know that I have a vast collection of different quote unquote if you want to call them translations of the Bible, but one that I have yet to add to my collection, don't know if I ever will, is the subject of today's sermon, and that is the Thomas Jefferson Bible, which you'll sometimes just hear called the Jefferson Bible, um, or if you look it up sometimes you might you'll see it referred to as the life and morals of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, as you can imagine, this is a work that was created by Thomas Jefferson, who Thomas Jefferson is the third president of these United States. Now, from my research, what I found was that he finished this, for a lack of a better term, Bible, around 1819. If you ever look at it, you'll see that it's not a complete Bible at all. It's an attempt by Thomas Jefferson to, let's say, harmonize the Gospels. He literally, what he did was he cut and pasted the content that's in the Bible, well, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and he put them in an order that he thought fit best. In Thomas Jefferson's mind, one of the most interesting and yet sadly disappointing aspects um, of the Jefferson Bible is the fact that Thomas Jefferson who was a naturalist he, he didn't believe in the supernatural so what he did he literally removed all of the miracles that you'll see in the Gospels now there are some references to some things, you know, things like the angels and hell and heaven, and even the coming eternal life. The accounts of the miracles of Jesus and all of the allusions to him being, a, you know, being God, and even the very important thing, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you won't find those in the Jefferson Bible. No, nowhere. Now, in my research, I found where there was an early version of the Thomas Jefferson Bible that had a, a much longer title. This edition was called, and I'm going to read you the entire title. You ready? The philosophy of Jesus of Nazareth being extracted from the account of his life and doctrines given by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John being an abridgment of the New Testament for the use of the Indians, uncomplicated with matters of fact or faith beyond their level of comprehension. Boy, is that a mouthful. When you look at it to, to our you know to our eyes, what it would seem like was that Thomas Jefferson believed that what he felt was the true story of Jesus was in the Gospels, but you needed to pull it out 
he believed that, in my opinion, that the miracles were there as a distraction. That they pulled our attention away from the philosophy and moral teachings of Jesus Christ. So Thomas Jefferson took it on himself to, let's say, un uncomplicate the story by removing the miracles. When you look at it that way, his book comes across more like a, uh, a Jesus seminar. But you see, there's a huge problem with this. The miracles of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, they work hand in hand. Let's read something together, will you? We're going to look at Acts chapter 2, verse 22. We read this. Yea, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, and ye yourselves also know. You see, the miracles, they were proof that Jesus' teachings were true. His miracles showed everyone that Jesus was far more than just some great moral or, or philosophical teacher. And what we see in the Thomas Jefferson Bible is Thomas Jefferson making a mistake. He's making the mistake that C.S. Lewis warned us about 150 years later in one of his books, specifically Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. If you look in that, I'm going to put it down below if you want to look it up. But if you look on pages 51 and 52 of the copy that I looked at, he says this, I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with the man who says he is a poached egg, or he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open for us. He did not intend to. If I'm going to shorten all that out to what I believe C.S. Lewis is trying to say, Jesus is either a lunatic, a liar, or the Lord. You have to make that choice. Which one is he to you? Thank you for joining me here. I pray the Lord continues to bless and keep you. I'll see you all soon. I love you. God bless you. You have been listening to Sermons in the Park with Reverend Jamie McCaskill. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble. And as always, thank you for listening. There's joy for the morning. Sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow. Heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal.